Today's meditation is on the second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Preparatory Prayers I began by placing myself in the presence of God. My God, I firmly believe that Thou art here present, and present in the depths of my soul, as truly as Thou art in heaven, in the midst of Thy angels and saints. O my God and Sovereign Lord, before whom the whole universe is but as dust, I prostrate myself before Thee, acknowledging that Thou art my Creator, and that I am Thy creature, and thus I offer the homage of my whole being to Thy supreme majesty. Eternal Father, I adore Thee as my Creator. Eternal Word, I adore Thee as my Redeemer. Eternal Spirit, Holy Ghost, I adore Thee as the sanctifier of my soul. I now acknowledge my sinfulness and beg God for pardon and strength. Have mercy on me, O God. I humbly confess my nothingness and my wretchedness. I am sorry for my many sins by which I have offended Thee and displeased Thee. Prostrate before Thee, I implore Thy grace, that I may be converted and do penance. I now pray for divine assistance. Come, Holy Ghost, enlighten my mind, strengthen my will, inflame my heart. I desire to make this meditation by Thy light, Thy inspiration, and Thy love. Holy Mary, Virgin and Mother of Divine Wisdom and Purest Love, bring me the help of God's grace. Saint Joseph, my dear guardian angel and patron saints, Come to my aid. I now form my intention. O oh, my Jesus, I offer this meditation for love of Thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. First Consideration The chief priests sought for evidence against Jesus that they might put Him to death, and they found none. Then they spat in his face and buffeted him, and others struck his face with the palms of their hands. In the courtyard outside Caiaphas' house, Peter denied our Lord three times, after which the cock crowed twice, as prophesied by our Lord. And going forth, Peter wept bitterly. The whole council, binding Jesus, led him away and delivered him to Pilate, the governor. Pilate asked the multitude, What shall I do then with Jesus that is called Christ? Three times Pilate said to the multitude, What evil hath he done? I find no cause in him. And each time the whole multitude together cried out, saying, Crucify him, let him be crucified. And Pilate said to them, I will chastise him therefore and release him. Then Pilate had Jesus scourged. Jesus is bound to a pillar and cruelly scourged to atone for our sins, especially those of impurity. Pilate then said to the Jews, Behold your king! But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Pilate, seeing that he prevailed nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, taking water, washed his hands before the people, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Look you to it. And the whole people answering said, His blood be upon us and our children. Then Pilate being willing to satisfy the people, released to them Barabbas and delivered Jesus to them to be crucified. St. Lawrence Justinian says, Jesus evidently ought to have died, yet he reserved himself unto life, it being his will 
to endure heavier sufferings. O my Jesus, by the merit of thy scourging, I ask thy pardon. I repent of having offended thee, and I propose rather to die than to offend thee again. Pardon me all the wrongs that I have done thee, and give me the grace ever to love thee from this day forth. Second consideration. Let us consider some of the many parallels between this mystery of the scourging of Jesus at the pillar and Fatima. Peter denied our Lord three times, and after our Lord cast upon him a look of reproach and pardon, Peter immediately went forth and wept bitterly for his sin. Tradition tells us that St. Peter, full of contrition, had recourse to our Blessed Mother. She assured him of her son's forgiveness. The popes serve as successors of St. Peter. And in the popes of the past century, we see the denial of St. Peter recapitulated. In this Marian age of which Fatima is the climax, we again see Peter thrice denying heaven. One, in 1925, the devotion of reparation on First Saturdays was to be promoted universally throughout the Church. To date, the Popes have not done this. 2. In 1929, Russia was to be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by the Pope in union with all the bishops of the world. To date, the Popes have not done this. And 3. In 1960, the Third Secret of Fatima was to be fully revealed to the world. To date, the popes have not done this. At Fatima, Our Lady tells us, Jesus wills to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. To whomever embraces this devotion, I promise salvation. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. Our church and the world are suffering terribly on account of this disobedience. And the betrayal has grown ever worse as true doctrine, faithful worship, and right morals taught by Christ himself are abandoned and upturned. Let us follow the example of St. Jacinta and the request of Our Lady of Fatima to pray for the poor Holy Father, that like St. Peter, he may with true contrition seek refuge in the Immaculate Heart of Mary and obey all the requests she gave at Fatima. Pilate told the multitude, I find no cause in him. I will chastise him, therefore. Succumbing to human respect, Pilate was terribly unjust. He acted thus to satisfy the enemies of Christ. Consider how Sister Lucia dos Santos suffered in this manner. The church hierarchy found no cause in Sister Lucia, yet chastised her. She was ignored, formally silenced, misrepresented and calumniated. Like our Lord, she held her silence. This injustice was motivated by human respect for the church's enemies. The forces of communism had to be appeased. Schismatic Orthodox 
could not be offended. The truth of Fatima is sacrificed for the errors of religious indifferentism, false worship and moral depravity. All those who suffer for Christ's sake, you and I included, will suffer at least a type of scourging. Let us unite these persecutions to the scourging of Christ, offering them in reparation for men's crimes against God and for the conversion of sinners. I love thee, my Jesus, scourged and torn to pieces for me. Would that I could see myself too torn to pieces for thee, like so many martyrs whose portion this has been. But if I cannot offer thee wounds and blood, I offer thee at least all the pains which it will be my lot to suffer. I offer thee my heart. With this I desire to love thee more even than I am able. I love thee, O God of love. Third consideration. Let us consider additional parallels between the scourging of Jesus at the pillar and Fatima. Jesus is stripped of his garments and scourged at the pillar for our sins of impurity and sensuality. With humble submission, Jesus accepts this painful and ignominious punishment in satisfaction for our sins. The executioners, after having lacerated the whole body, continue without mercy to lash the wounds already inflicted and add pain to pain. Do I reflect on our Lord's sufferings, but still more on the love with which he submitted to so excruciating a torture for my sake? For the atonement of my sins, Jesus permitted all his flesh to be mangled. The scourges so deformed him that he could no longer be recognized. Jesus voluntarily submitted to torments in order to deliver me from eternal torments. Our Lady of Fatima told Jacinta, The sins which lead most souls to hell are sins of the flesh. Do I commit sins of the flesh? Have I considered that it was for these sins that Jesus was so cruelly scourged? Do I pray the rosary daily for the graces to mortify my senses and to avoid these sins? Sister Lucia tells us that Our Lady has given a new efficacy to praying the Holy Rosary such that there is no problem. No matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or above all spiritual, that cannot be solved by praying the Rosary. While the executioner scourged Jesus so cruelly, he neither speaks nor complains, but patiently offers all to God to appease his anger against us. St. Francisco, St. Jacinta, and Venerable Lucia suffered so much. They joyfully offered these sufferings to console our Lord, who is so much offended, to help save sinners who have no one to pray for them, and in reparation for sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Do I patiently offer my sufferings to God without complaint, to appease His just wrath against me? Do I offer my sufferings 
as a sacrifice for love of Jesus, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Most loving Jesus, scourged and torn to pieces for me, I return thee thanks for so great love, and I grieve that I am myself, by reason of my sins, one of those who scourge thee. O oh, my Jesus, I detest all those wicked pleasures which have cost thee so much pain. I repent with all my heart of having offended thee, who art so, so good and deserving of all my love. I will never abandon thee more, for enough has been the time that I have gone astray from thee. O oh, my Jesus, I love thee with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my soul. Resolution. O oh my God, with the help of thy grace, I resolve to. You may resolve to mortify your flesh by fasting on Fridays in honor of our Lord's Passion or on Saturdays in honor of our, Lord, our Lady's Sorrows. You may resolve to mortify your eyes by not viewing television or the internet on Fridays in honor of our Lord's Passion and in reparation for sins of impurity. You may resolve to mortify your ears by not listening to that which you enjoy listening to on Fridays in honor of our Lord's passion and in reparation for sins of impurity. You may resolve to mortify your tongue by determining specific ways to eliminate excessive and idle talk. You may resolve to meditate on the sufferings of our Lord for at least five minutes on Fridays in honor of our Lord's passion and in reparation for sins of impurity. Conclusion I give thee thanks, O God, for the graces which thou in thy infinite mercy hast granted me by means of this meditation. Please grant me the help of thy grace to carry out my resolutions and so please thee. Grant me a greater love of thee, the pardon of my sins and final perseverance. Most Holy Mary, Saint Joseph, my dear guardian angel and patron saints, intercede for me that I may be faithful to my holy resolutions and grow in the love of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.